Okay. Thank you, Karsten. Um, yeah, I will, let's say I will do uh, 45 hours, uh, 45 minutes, and uh, then be the next, then be everything else we will postpone to tomorrow. Um, let me let me answer first uh, to to the problems which were mentioned by um, yeah mainly by by Taha. So of course this problem with the gliders, it, it must be a bug and we have to fix it. Um, combining of SVG shapes. Uh, and then you see this tiny, tiny gap between the two shapes. Uh, actually, we had it too. Uh, with, or we have it too with uh, arrowheads. And I would be very grateful if someone has a solution to it. So this is somehow uh, uh, in the in the browser's uh, SVG renderer. And I, I don't know uh, yet how to, how to glue them together uh, completely. So there's always a, a small, tiny, tiny gap. Yeah, uh, 3D we will do tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe I, I will say a few words about animation, but let, let's see. But uh, uh, let's start with what I have prepared today. <clears throat> I have put this uh, PDF of the advanced workshop in, into the discussion forum in the Moodle. Uh, actually, I have already changed it slightly. <clears throat> uh, and I will probably find some bugs uh, and, and uh, correct them. And then uh, the discussion, discussion forum will get uh, the latest version afterwards. So, um, yeah. Um, Uh, first, uh, the usual preliminaries. Um, um, if you are in, and have the have done the beginners workshop and you want to learn more, then uh, please have a look at uh, the JSX Graph Wiki and our examples database and the API documentation to find more examples. Uh, usually, completely with with source code. Um, and this is here it's listed our uh, oh not our it, it's a template for a minimum a nearly minimum uh, html page containing jsx graph so this is what we used yesterday in the beginners workshop so we loaded uh, um, we downloaded uh, two files from from the cdn namely uh, JSX graph CSS, which gives us a nice uh, border and also handles uh, the full screen mode. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, the source code of JSX graph, which is minimi uh, minified in, uh, in this JSX graph core. Um, optionally, you can add some uh, LaTeX re rendering, so this is if you want to have math checks, you can include this file or KTEC. Um, <clears throat> actually, this is the uh, this is the, the the online mode, and uh, most uh, most content in JSX graph seems to be uh, uh, done by using a local copy of JSX graph. So as a developer, you can do that too, and you download JSX of core and JSX of CSS and just uh, uh, lo load it directly in this uh, from, from your hard disk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, in my, the, the, the topics I selected for today, I mainly oriented, uh, or the focus is on, on new things which happened in the last year. And one of it is uh, the support of themes. And um, so if you want to style your, your construction, then uh, now you 
don't have to um, to switch the color for each element in every application. You can do it once in a in a style file. And uh, yeah, for we provided one let's say template uh, theme which is included in into uh, JSX Graph Core. All every other theme which will which you will hopefully develop uh, has to be loaded uh, uh, as an extra file. So here's an, uh, I want to show you an, an example. So uh, here's a JS Fiddle. Uh, this is the mono thin theme. So uh, every element, the elements are thro uh, drawn very thin and uh, in black and white. So the hope is that you can use it for, for a printing publication. Um, yeah, if you if you are used to LaTeX or uh, textile, then maybe the textbook textile, then maybe this is uh, the more more common uh, style of of a mathematical graphics. <clears throat> yeah, and so what what do you have to do if you want to create your own theme? Uh, well, you have to, um, the best thing is you make a copy of this monothin JS file and uh, load it into your application. And this monothin JS file looks like this. It's on, on, on GitHub. So ac actually it, uh, it just, uh, overrides all the options uh the, the column the colors of and maybe sizes of all the options and here here is the the only let statement in the whole chase extra of source code um <clears throat> well uh yeah we here we uh to to be flexible we we set a, a size factor and a a default color. Okay, uh, so you you do this, and then you just uh, um, you just uh, put this huge uh, uh, JavaScript object which starts here and ends and ends uh, here. You put it in into this. Uh, this dictionary or array or object uh, J JXG themes and give it uh, uh, a unique name like monothin. And then like this. So you add this, your theme uh, to JSX graph. And then uh, you have to load your your file containing the theme after loading JSX graph, and then you just uh, in the in the board attribute you just set uh, the theme name, like uh, like uh, here. I just set theme monothin, and you have to replace it by by your theme name. This is hopefully all, and hopefully you will. Uh, uh, submit uh, your theme to the to the public so we can collect themes and maybe um, uh, have uh, yeah have uh, soon there will be a lot of nice nice uh, themes yeah okay this is uh, themes then a dream came due last year. Namely, we implemented implicit curves or plotting of implicit curves. And um, yeah, but uh, I have to say, okay, whatever implementation of implicit curve you will have, it uh, someone will come up with a with a curve which will break the the, the algorithm. So it's it is doomed to fail. 
Uh, so, uh, but hopefully we will we will improve it uh, this algorithm and getting it and it becomes more stable. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, well, the, the syntax is quite simple. Uh, you supply a uh, well, the right hand side or the left hand side of an equation, and uh, the the algorithm plots, for example, here it's x squared plus uh, y squared minus four. And it uh, plots uh, the set of solutions of x squared plus y squared minus 4 equals 0. And you can uh, plug in this left-hand side of this, uh, this equation. or it, In other words, the, the algorithm plots the set of roots of this uh, function. Uh, <clears throat> and... You can supply this function as a string, then it's uh, then it's uh, in interpreted by by Jesse code, or you can supply it as a here like like this as a JavaScript function. Doesn't matter; it's the same. Okay, let's let's have an example. Or some examples. So, uh, um, yeah, here we see a circle. Um, this is uh, x squared plus uh, y squared minus 4. The solution of x squared plus y squared minus 4. And uh, for, the late, uh, for the next examples, we have two sliders. And for these sliders, uh, there was also a new contribution by Christian Lawson Perfect, namely he introduced snap values. So you can uh, supply a slider with uh, values where the, the slider sh should snap to and, uh, and you can also supply a distance from where the slider should, the snappiness more, more or less uh, of, the, of the glider. So it's easy now to to hit the, the the value zero exactly. This was previously this was a mess with uh, with just JSX graph. Okay, then the, the curve is just uh, plotted by using the new element implicit curve, and you supply the the uh, the function uh, whose roots are computed and. Uh, Optionally, you can uh, can supply uh, the range of x and the range of uh, y as two more um, um, arrays. And uh, then this curve um, can have the usual attributes of a curve, like stroke width and so on. And then there are a lot of options how to how to improve the quality uh, of the curve. Uh, the most important is the resolution. So uh, often for more complicated uh, implicit curves, the set of solutions is, uh, uh, is decomposed into independent components. And uh, in the first step, all these components have to be found. And for this, uh, we have this resolution outer and resolution inner, which is at the moment uh, more or less outer is uh, the density. Uh, uh, so we're searching in vertical lines across the board or across the range. And each vertical line is uh, then uh, divided into horizontal lines and or horizontal intervals, and this is deter this determined this resolution outer and resolution inner. And if you make this uh, resolution um, more detailed, then of course this initial phase will take more time, and, uh, and the quality will be better. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, so it's a, you have to find a compromise. 
So uh, let's see a different example. Uh, conic section and ellipse like this. And yeah, it's also a static ellipse. And uh, here's a dynamic construction. So this uh, construction is a JavaScript function and it uses uh, the value of this slider A. So and then we can see how uh, this ellipse uh, degenerates with A equal to zero into two lines and then uh, it switches to an hyperbola, yeah, like this, okay. Uh, okay, and then I can show you also more complex or complicated curves, difficult, uh, uh, which usually are difficult for the, uh, for the plotting algorithm like this. So here we have a point, uh, we have two points uh, where the derivative uh, doesn't exist. Ah, so it's like this. But this is always uh, a difficult, uh, 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 difficult uh, areas. Then uh, this is also quite difficult when we have uh, inflection points. So we have, um, <clears throat> so we have, um, yeah, one point, which is two times in, uh, on, on the, on, on this path. And uh, this is the main, this was the main problem we had in developing uh, this implicit uh, plotting algorithm. We don't want, uh, so we could simply have found all solutions and uh, paint them, but uh, this will not, would not be good enough. So we want to, we want to have a, we want to para parameterize uh, this curve so we can put a slider on it. And this makes it more difficult. Uh, then another difficult thing is uh, our cusps like this. Now this is fixed, and here is what I, with a what's curve, it's uh, what I wanted to say with the components. So um, we have a curve like this, and uh, yeah, it decomposes into two components. And actually, uh, sometimes there are some singular points, but uh, these are not plotted. And you see here, to be honest, sometimes there are problems uh, uh, with the full, it's a fully closed. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, this is implicit plotting. And I hope, I hope you like it. Um, and, uh, Alfred, there's a question in the chat by Andreas, uh, if it is possible to fill the area surrounded by the curve. Yes, uh, yes, uh, so this is, uh, um, well, this is not longer, um, well, oh, let's say it like this, so filling is done with uh, SVG. So you uh, you should, if you want to fill something, it should be a closed curve. And uh, then the fill algorithm of SVG will fill it. So uh, if, the co if there are self-inflections, then maybe the, the result is not what you want, but uh, um, otherwise it, it, it should work like it with every other curve. Um, Fill color. Uh, let's do some yellow. Uh, and 
and uh, this is uh, this is what I didn't show show it yes uh, I didn't show it yesterday. You can also supply RGBA uh, values. So it's like this. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, if you have a look at the uh, RP documentation, then you see the, the options. Um, yeah, and some, some hint, sometimes you don't need a dynamic, uh, you don't need a dynamic curve uh, because uh, this is you want this curve just to be the basis uh, of of some further construction, then it is uh, and and if speed is an issue, then uh, you should uh, plot uh, should use the attribute needs regular update true, no uh, no false of course. Sorry false. Um, then uh, it's uh, it's only updated if the viewport is changed, like zooming or panning. Yeah, then if you or if we have implicit plots, it's uh, the next step is to have contour lines, and this is now quite easy. Oh. Like this. Um, so we can supply a set. This example is due to Vigand Ratman. So uh, we can supply a list of uh, contour levels. And then uh, for each contour level, we plot a separate, cur a separate curve. And uh, we, have to, uh, we have to change the, the function accordingly. So we we uh, subtract the right hand side, so to say, supply some domain if if it's needed, the range of x and the range of y, and uh, and then we we plot it, and then it looks like this. And here we have a regular needs regular update false. Okay, so. Good. Um, and uh, also, thanks to Vigand, we have uh, we can use um, we can use uh, implicit plots or contour lines uh, in in a in a larger context, namely to to visualize Lagrange multipliers. And for these contour lines, I want to say. Probably will um, we will introduce in one of the next versions a separate element like contours, contour curve or whatever contour, uh, though that uh, this uh, which does this uh, uh, for you, so you don't have to program the the loop. Okay, this uh, Lagrange multiplier. It's uh, the JavaScript code is not too, yeah, it's, you have to, it, let's have a look at the example. So let's have a more simple example. Uh, so here we have um, some examples and you can set an example into the input field and then use this example. You can also type in your, your own example, doesn't matter. So, and uh, what does it do? So we have an objective function and uh, we have uh, contour levels. And uh, the first step is to, to plot uh, these contour lines for these contour levels. So this is uh, this, uh, yeah, this conic section here, okay? 
And then uh, we have a constraint. Uh, this constraint is given by, by this parabola. Uh, this is a blue line. And now you want a student uh, to find or to, to identify the point uh, where uh, the objective function uh, takes a local extrema extremum um, and obeys the constraint. So the, the maximum or minimum of this objective function uh, such that uh, the point is on this curve, on this blue curves curve. And if you know calculus in it, then you know uh, Lagrange multiplier, you know that the, the two gradients have to be linear, linearly uh, dependent. And uh, this is so this is uh, this is a solution. I think this is a very nice vis visualization of this Lagrange multiplier thing. Yeah, okay, and of course it uses uh, um, implicit curves. <clears throat> Okay, the next point, which uh, I will also use uh, in a minute for implicit curves, is uh, this other intersection element. Um, if you remember David Flanner's talk yesterday, he um, uh, showed us the 90 degree angle uh, theorem on, in, on the circle. So he had this circle and the line and the intersection. And here um, I have a small variation of the, this setting. Uh, I have, uh, let's start it from the beginning. I have uh, two points. Two points. And uh, oh, two, uh, three points, and I have a circle um, with center C and a point on the radius A. And <clears throat> I have a second circle, uh, it has center D and uh, a is also on its uh, circle line, like this. Okay. Uh, and the second circle yesterday by David was, an, uh, was a line. And now we can uh, create the intersection two. So uh, I call it I1. And now we have a problem that uh, I1 and A coincide, uh, yeah, that they are the same. So A, A, I, A1 equals A. Okay, but uh, this depends on the situation, on the intersection algorithm. So uh, if, the, if I move the circle, then suddenly um, I1 is the other intersection point. Okay, so I can, uh, usually you can uh, give a third parameter the number of the intersection point. Uh, so, but this doesn't help. So if I don't do anything, it, I choose uh, zero. It, now they coincide. And if I take one, it's the other one. But uh, in a different constellation, they also coincide. So this doesn't help too much. And uh, fortunately, there's this element other intersection. Which we introduced exactly for this. Um, I call it I2. So uh, it's also the intersection of a circle one and circle two. And the third parame parameter is the point which has to be up to be avoided. So I now I switch it to zero. 
Okay, now, uh, whatever I do, uh, I too will be different from A. Sometimes it will be the same as A1, but uh, A1, I don't need A1, I1. Uh, so this is comes in handy if, um, well, if you have an intersection point, and, well, then you can take the other intersection point, or if you know by your construction that A is already an intersection point, then you also can use the inter, the other intersection. And <clears throat> this has been extended now um, uh, and is more flexible. So instead, instead of instead of giving one element which is to be avoided, you can supply a list of elements, a list of points which have to be avoided. And this is the case here in this little example. This is an elliptic curve. You, um, and you may know that the, the, the points on an elliptic curve, they form a group. And the group law is uh, you, um, if you want to, uh, to, to add these two points A and B, then you uh, construct a line through A and B. It will intersect the elliptic curve uh, in a third point. And then you have to take uh, the negative of this. Uh, uh, so uh, you have to, you take, uh, yeah, yeah, inflect or reflect um, this point at the uh, uh, x-axis. Oh, minus c is not really true. Uh, <clears throat> okay, but now uh, more than two situations arise. Maybe I can I can put b, uh, let's say c in the middle of uh, a and b or to the left. Uh, so I can, and uh, we have to re react to all, to all these situations. And for this, this, um, this other intersection, this generalized other intersection is quite handy. And this curve is just plotted like this. So it's a, uh, we just put in the, the equation of the, of the elliptic curve and, and you can plot it. Yeah, then <clears throat> um, the next thing, complex numbers, this was a user request. Um, so since many years, Chase Extra comes comes with support for complex numbers. It's a little bulky, but uh, but it works. And uh, let's start, let's have this example. So, uh, for example, we may uh, show the the arithmetics of of uh, complex numbers in the complex plane, and uh, we can do this. Let's say for multiplication, we can do it like this: we have two points, set one and set two, and uh, the third point. Uh, yeah, it's a little. It's not not very easy, but uh, and you can also do it by hand. But uh, maybe it's useful. Uh, you create uh, from the x and y co component. You create a complex number uh, for both uh, these points. Then you can multiply this uh, to the complex complex multiplication of these two points, and for the from the result you uh, extract the X and Y component. So, the, so the, the real and the imaginary part. And then you get this uh, third point like this. So this is a possible use of, of this uh, module uh, complex numbers in JSX graph. But this was not a, the a user request. The user request was uh, what this, can we have, uh, an algorithm to compute all roots of a polynomial, of a polynomial with real coefficients. And of course, uh, in, gen uh, in general, these uh, there are also 
um, the roots are also co complex numbers. And uh, and here's an example, it's in our database. So I took uh, this, uh, this polynomial of degree nine, and it has, uh, it shows quite uh, nicely the usual situation uh, that uh, that polynomials uh, with uh, complex, with real co coefficients tend to have very few uh, large real roots and the rest of the roots are, and, and most of the roots are inside of the unit circle. And <clears throat> Actually, this is a quite fascinating algorithm. It's by, it goes back to Weierstrass. It's a very nice algorithm and it's available in JXG math numerics pole zeros. And you have to put in the coefficients uh, with the least coefficients, uh, starting with the least coefficients. And to plot this uh, term of a, of a polynomial, you can use the, uh, function generate polynomial term. Okay. <clears throat> then there's a dynamic version of it. Um, it's hard to do it for the for this polynomial to, to make it fully dynamic. Uh, so I have introduced two sliders which change uh, the coefficient at x to the eight and uh, x to the seventh. So and you see the change of the, the roots if I change this coefficient. And uh, yeah. And uh, what you also see quite nicely is that uh, the, the complex root all, all, always come in pairs with a, uh, by con conjugation. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe the what can we do with this? roots so uh, so we compute the roots with this function takes g math numerics pole zeros and then for each root we take out the real and the imaginary part and uh, create a point similar to the example before Another user request was to improve the stati statistics methods a little bit. Of course, uh, if you have heard David's talk yesterday, um, it's clear that at some point in Chase Iskra, we have to stop and uh, and say, okay, there are wonderful libraries outside of Chase Iskra which support statistics, uh, higher math, and so on. We are responsible for plotting. Uh, but uh, this was a challenge and I I put uh, in the, the algorithm to, to compute random numbers for the following distributions. And we now have them, we support the gamma function in the math module. So we have several, several uh, uh, distributions for which we can produce uh, random numbers. And uh, well, here's an example. Uh, it's a, by, made by Tom Berend, who suggested the use um, for the for the binomial distribution. It looks like this. Uh, so we do three different experiments. Each comes, each computes uh, fifty thousand uh, random numbers. Uh, uh, distributed by the binomial distribution. And uh, so for each experiment, we first create a, lead, a legend. This is this part here. And uh, then we uh, fill an array with 50,000 numbers, where these numbers come from this statistics, JXG math statistics random binomial. Uh, with parameters, for example, 0 0.5, 20. So it 
takes out 20. This is the blue curve. Um, yeah. Um, okay, and, and then um, we have a, another new method, namely statistics histogram. This doesn't plot for itself. It's just uh, an, uh, it, does an, it makes an analysis of, of the data. So it takes this uh, array of 5,000, 50,000 uh, random numbers and puts uh, the, these random numbers into 40 bins. And then uh, uh, this, these bins are, are plotted. So this is why they are, this is a discrete curve. And so you can prepare, if you want to plot a histogram, this, this method is quite, quite useful. And uh, um, you have some um, variation, uh, some variation is possible. This is the, more or less the same with seven experiments for the gamma function, for the gamma distribution, sorry. Uh, so we plot the density on the left side, in the left chase uh, uh, graph board. And in the second board, so we, we have two boards here. The second board, we, um, we uh, plot another histogram where, which is uh, cumulative. So yeah, it uh, sums up to one. Okay. And well, I would say for, for statistics courses, this might be quite useful. Yeah, and if you want to see distributions uh, uh, and densities functions for for themselves, then I would uh, I will I have a link to Vigan Ratman's uh, homepage, and he has done a lot of things with these distributions, uh, and eventually we will put them into our, uh, we discussed it, and eventually we will put it in our in our examples database. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> okay, and finally, and then we will stop for today. I will show you uh, an an improved way to position labels for lines, circles, and uh, and curves. This is in the in the direction of of Taha, which may be useful for her, uh, for for many of you. So actually, yeah, previously, um, previously, uh, labels for, for segments or for, for one dimensional uh, elements were a mess in, in JSX graph. So it was plotted like this, uh, it was very ugly. So, okay, this is extremely ugly because now uh, this anchor X and anchor Y doesn't fit. Uh, but anyhow, we have an, a new way to put labels on to one dimensional uh, objects. So all the one dimensional objects like curves, lines and circles, they have a direction. So essentially it's an SVG path. <clears throat> and um, um, yeah, and now we can set a position to this uh, to the to the label, and it's it's usually uh, it's uh, uh, you give two uh, two values, namely the 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 position in uh, the the length, so to say, the position. In, in the direction of the element and then uh, either left or right. So this is, uh, this is so the, the, this path or this segment runs from here to here. 
because the first point is minus three, two, and the second is three, two. So it runs from here to here. So it's, uh, uh, and we, if we take position right, it's to the right. Uh, uh, we can left, we can do left, then it's like this. And uh, then we have a distance which is more or less a factor, which is multi so how far um, the the element is is away uh, the the distance of, uh, of of the label from the element, and it's more or less a factor of the font size of of from this this uh, uh, bounding box of of this text, and. Um, yeah, and for the for the position in in the direction of the of the line, you can give um, user coordinates. So here's here's one. It means it's one user unit from the start. You can also give uh, twenty pixel, or you can uh, say uh, fifty percent. Or you can do uh, uh, zero point five fraction. It's the same. Okay. So um, yeah, this uh, should be quite quite helpful. Actually, it came from I had to do a, a construction, a little bit more complex construction, uh, and I was not able to to position the labels by myself and I, I had to do this. Yeah, okay, this is for lines and uh, for circles, it's uh, more or less the same. So uh, beside, uh, if you don't give a unit, then it's uh, the angle in degree. So zero is uh, this and uh, 90 is of course this, yeah. Uh, and uh, pixel don't work in this case, but you can do uh, fifty percent. Yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, the next thing is for curves, and it's it's exactly the same. Um, so these curves run from here to here, and um, and you. Put in the same with the same uh, uh, algorithm. You can put your position. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe I'd say a, a, a last word about this. What what Andreas already said: uh, grid and access. So. Um, um, Grid was more or less an abundant uh, element because uh, it had no, no aut automatic uh, stop. So you can could practically, uh, con uh, um, uh, by zooming in, you could uh, break the browser uh, and it was just a gray spot. But now this has been fixed, and and it adapts a little bit to the um, to the zoom level, and maybe to make it useful, you should uh, restrict the zoom le level to to useful uh, bounds, and and then uh, uh, it's clear what the grid is. Uh, it was a little bit abundant because we had uh, infinite ticks, so for access, an access is. Uh, This is an axis, uh, these are the default axis, and they have also something like a grid. But uh, the grid lines are, uh, actually they are infinite tick lines, and this is not, not the same. And so people sometimes used both, uh, but it was not in sync, and, and this is now, now hopefully more clear. Yeah. Okay, I would say I stop here. Uh, so sticky and and uh, and fixed has already been shown by by Andreas. 
Uh, one one last feature. It was also a user request um, several times in the last years. So the question was, um, uh, yeah, the question was, can we have fractions, uh, uh, fractions in for the for the tick uh, labels, and yes, we can. Um, so this is the the, the regular axis uh, without fractions, but uh, the, the the default y axis and this additional axis they have they display fractions, and let's say uh, let's the um, so what do you have to do? Um, you have to enable the, the attribute to fraction. And uh, if you want to use math checks, you have also to uh, set the display to HTML. And um, so this is now displayed with uh, or rendered with math checks. If you don't want math checks, so this is, let's do it for this horizontal axis. Then it's, uh, it looks like this. So it's also fractions, but not as nice as with, uh, uh, not as nice as with uh, math checks. So this is possible now and uh, might be useful in, in some situation. Okay. Uh, that's all for the moment and yeah we will continue tomorrow i hope it was useful somehow <laughs>